Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. On today's program, Kyle Bauer visits with Justin Rizavi, a technology manager, about the rapid growth of technology use in agriculture. Then enjoy this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Next, Kyle talks with Bart Ruth about solutions from the land and the 25 by 25 program. Then it's this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update, and we'll end with Plain Talk featuring Kyle and Dwayne. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first today, Kyle Bauer and Justin Rizavi talk about new technologies in the ag industry. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer visiting with Justin Rizavi with Winfield. Uh, Justin, you're a technology manager Technology and agriculture has been changing in a hurry and it's hard to keep up. I assume that's part of your job is to keep up. That's right. Things are constantly changing on the technology side. And, you know, it's it's really a neat evolution that farmers are able to see their fields in a different light. So uh, these technology tools really give us a lot of insights as to how they can improve their operations. So how do the farmers access these tools? So the, the farmers would access the tools through their local retailer. So one of, one of the tools that we offer is called the R7 tool. And that would be a, a tool that farmers can see uh, pieces like satellite imagery and, and map their own fields and, and get a good look at, at some of the site specificness of, of agriculture on their fields today. Then on interpreting that data, how does that work? Um, is that done through the software or done through your services? So yeah, there's, there's different layers that you can look at, whether it's bringing in yield data or looking at historical imagery within the tool. You know, there's other insights. We have a, a robust answer plot system in Winfield United, and a lot of the insights that come out of that answer plot are housed in, within the tool, so we can help give insights on product performance utilizing the tool. Winfield Solutions uh, has a very large uh, area that they work, um, but being in Kansas is different than being in Iowa. I, do you adjust to that? Yeah, I think, you know, in, in every, every geography, we're going to pick out different things. I was just talking to a gentleman this morning about how, how he utilizes it in his area. And, you know, one thing we found that looking at the weather information within the tool, rainfall is completely different. You know, in my area, North Dakota, we're half the rainfall uh, during the growing season than what he's seeing in his area. So definitely able to make some of those sound decisions based off of what, what you're seeing in your geography and figuring out what works on a local basis. Been visiting with Justin Rizabi. He is with Winfield Solutions. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Thanks, Kyle. Stay tuned after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com. Join us for the fourth annual meeting demand sale at Gardner Angus Ranch, Monday, May 13th at 10 a.m. Up for sale are 173 20-month-olds and 250 bred commercial cows and heifers, including the complete dispersal of longtime Gardner customer Yolo Ranch. Catalog available at GardnerAngus.com. Register for online bidding at LiveAuction.tv. At Gardner Angus Ranch, you aren't just buying a breed. You are buying a brand backed by four generations of disciplined seed stock production. See you May 13th at the ranch. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if you're held liable 
in any type of accident, the judgment can claim your assets. Please give me a call so we can discuss 316-945-6733. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. As fourth-generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Gretchen Sassenrath, K-State Research Agronomist at the Southeast Research Extension Center joins us. And Gretchen, you've been a part of research funded by the Kansas Soybean Commission that showed many benefits when planting a mustard cover crop. The mustard, first of all, it's not the weed mustard. This mustard has high glucosinolate concentration. And the glucosinolate in improves the soil microbes and controls some of the biological pests that occur in the soil, and it does this naturally. So the glucosinolates reduce the amount of fungus that causes charcoal rot. That's what we've been focusing on with this research. We find by using the cover crop, the mustard cover crop, we see a reduction in the amount of fungus this macrophemina that causes charcoal rot. We actually didn't see a difference in soybean yield with using the mustard, but we saw a huge reduction in the amount of charcoal rot disease that was present both in the soil and in the plant. Charcoal rot is an endemic disease in southeast Kansas. It occurs under wet conditions, and we certainly have that in southeast Kansas. It is everywhere. It's in all the soil. It's kind of a, a natural ingredient of our soils. And so we don't always have a particular outbreak of it that's causing a yield reduction. The past couple of years have been kind of mild for it, but it's always there. And what we've seen with them using this mustard cover crop, it will reduce the amount of fungus that causes the charcoal rot disease. In so many ways, you could look at this as really a holistic approach. That is exactly right. It's kind of like you want to keep yourself healthy and then you'll be more immune to colds and flu that come around. That's exactly what this is. It's building the soil up and allowing the microbes in the soil to be healthier and support the soybean production better. We had mentioned this project was funded by the Kansas Soybean Commission, but I also know you had other funding revenue sources as well and help on this project. USDA also provides funding for this. I'd also really like to recognize my collaborators, especially plant pathologist Chris Little. He does a lot of the work with counting the colony forming units and identifying the bacteria. And also Shamal Lin and Craig Rusaboom, both in agronomy at K-State. All right, Gretchen, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. That is Gretchen Sassenrath, K-State Research Extension agronomist at the Southeast Research Extension Center, who joins us on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us after the break for more with Kyle Bauer and Bart Root. What if U.S. soybean oil were an industry sensation? if end users started asking for it by name. That future is here, the time is now. To meet customer demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in varieties that produce oil with increased functionality. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff. 
Progress powered by Kansas farmers. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel, made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues, improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about employee safety and work comp coverage. On your farm, do you ask your friends to come help? Are they considered employees or neighbors helping neighbors? Did you know that you can be held responsible just as if it's a work comp accident? Give me a call, we can discuss. 316-945-6733. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now we learn about solutions from the land and the 25 by 25 program with Kyle Bauer and Bart Ruth. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer. I have the opportunity to visit with Bart Ruth. He's with Solutions from the Land, um, formerly known or concurrently known as 25 by 25. Um, and of course, that's been around for a while, but let's talk about the whole organization, Bart. Well, 25 by 25 started back in 2004 when a group of farmer leaders across agriculture um, commodity organizations were sitting around thinking of ways that agriculture can be a positive contributor to our nation's energy supply. And we realized that through biofuels, um, wind, solar, hydro, um, biomass, that we had a lot to contribute. So we set a target of 25% of our nation's energy supply becoming, coming from renewable resources by the year 2025. And, you know, we saw considerable growth early on, um, but currently we're around 11, 12, 13 percent, somewhere in that range. So we've made progress. Um, progress has slowed a little bit here the last few years. Um, we haven't had as much emphasis on policy for renewables the past few years. Um, oil, energy prices have, have fallen at the oil, um, crude oil level. So producers um, and consumers have kind of taken their eye off the ball a little bit. We've kind of come complacent. But uh, I think we still have, uh, we're still seeing growth in the industry. A lot of it's driven by improved technology. Solar cells have improved dramatically. Um, we're still seeing wind turbines go up. So while the progress is slowed, we're still making progress toward our goal. And I think that's positive because, uh, you know, we could have, could have hit a plateau and stalled, but we're still seeing growth. So that hopefully we can build on the future. And now with um, the House switching to Democratic control, maybe we'll see some renewed emphasis on renewables. <clears throat> Certainly, uh, though, as you press for carbon sequestration in the soil, there was a new awareness of what that can bring for the um, yield potential and the health of the soil. Well, certainly that's been an outgrowth of our efforts on 25 by 25, because a lot of the things we were doing we're having positive environmental impacts, um, which is good for consumers and the general public, but also um, farmers are looking for ways to improve their bottom line in, in a period where we're really struggling with commodity prices to make, a, to make the ends meet. So some of the things that we're, we're doing on the farm um, through no-till, through cover crops, are improving the soil quality, um, improving our yields through natural methods, all those things or win-win because they're benefiting the producers and they're benefiting the American public. Solutions from their land is mainly manned by volunteers. It's entirely by volunteers except for uh, basically our director in, in, in uh, Maryland who is kind of shepherding us through this process. But uh, membership of Solutions from Land and 25 by 25 have always been um, past leaders from commodity organizations. So it's people that have spent a fair amount of time doing policy work in Washington. Um, know who influences policy across the country and it's been a, an enjoyable effort and it's been a chance for us to, to, to give back to the industry that we worked hard on as, as volunteers in the commodity world. And you're a farmer from Nebraska? I am. I raise corn and soybeans with my son. And what part of Nebraska is that? Eastern Nebraska, about 80 miles straight west of Omaha. So in the last, I'll say 20 years, 15 years, um, We've, we have made progress, and there's still continuing to be a, a trend up for the things that you're promoting. Well, there has been, and you know, it's obviously not at the rate we would have hoped for. We're not going to reach our target of 25 by 25, but uh, you know, I think we're, we've taken incremental growth the last couple of years, which I think is important, and it's something we can 
positively build on going forward because these things are cyclical. Oil prices are at a relatively low level now and consumers are satisfied paying less than $2.50 a gallon for, for gasoline. But uh, we know that's not going to be the same uh, a year from now or two years from now. So we need to keep moving forward, looking for solutions. It's always better to have multiple options for energy than to rely on a single source. Visiting with Bart Ruth, he is with Solutions from the Land. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotary cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there's a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I want to do it. So we did it and it worked. And I'm not going to go out and take trees with a shovel anymore, but then I can do the things that I want to do now. Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities and it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know and have worked with and known for many years. As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Farm Bureau Update. Charlie and Jessica Brunker operate a fifth generation farm in Johnson County. They farm more than 4,000 no-till acres that produce corn, wheat, soybeans, and hay. The couple also run 110 head of spring calving cows and 35 fall calving cows. The herd consists of Angus, Simmental, and club calves. Jessica and Charlie are both third-generation Kansas Farm Bureau members and understand what it means to be Farm Bureau proud. Jessica currently serves as the Johnson County Farm Bureau Board President. The couple has also attended the Leeds trip to Washington, D.C. and hosted several legislative dinners at their farm. The couple enjoys serving their community by giving back in many ways. Both are active in the First Presbyterian Church of Gardner and give their time to the Johnson County Fair Association. Charlie serves as the arena superintendent, and Jessica serves as beef superintendent. Charlie and Jessica are thankful Kansas Farm Bureau provides the tools and resources for a smooth family farm transition. They believe Kansas Farm Bureau is the voice farm families can trust. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Plain Talk. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. 
We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back. Now let's see what Kyle and Duane are discussing on this edition of Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk with the man who understands that when you're on a high horse, there's no graceful way to get down, Duane Taves. <laughs> This all depends on how long your legs are. And how high a horse that you're on. <laughs> I've become more fond of fences and trailer fenders. Oh, yeah. You need to ride with me, buddy. I'll take care of you. We don't stop unless we got a place we can get back on. <laughs> it's like, wow. <laughs> Made that mistake once. Had a bunch of old rummies my age. And uh, we like to have never got back on this. Had to walk on foot for a quarter mile <laughs> to find a high spot. Yeah, it was a lot more fun to look at them. You know, 16 hand horses when you were a kid, wasn't a big deal to stick your foot up there and crawl. Pull yourself on. up. Yeah. Your fact or fiction question of the day, Kyle Bauer. The Goat du Noir restaurant in Paris. Okay. Goot. That should be Goot. Goot. G O U T. Goot. Okay. Goot Noir restaurant in Paris uh, has an unusual practice of serving everyone in the dark. Fact or fiction? I'm going to go with fiction, Dwayne. Says it's true. Oh, well. Huh. I guess you don't have to worry about the presentation. No, then, I guess not. No lights. It's, yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't think I'd be a big fan Just of that one. Just light a plate in front of you them know, and I let them go. If you were out with a homely person, it might be all right. <laughs> What? It's like, let's go to the Gutenior. Or. That's I mean, not exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> that isn't we what were you were thinking? Going to go with. Okay. But... Did you realize that Frederick Remington, you know, the, the Western sculptor, yes. was started his work when he was a sheep farmer here in Kansas? No. Yeah, he had a ranch, a sheep ranch down by Whitewater. Okay. And um, and he oh. you know, had extra time, and so he'd make sketches. What are you hoeing about? Well, I'm thinking... I, you kind of grew up in the Whitewater. I did, and there happens to be what they refer to as Remington High School. Well... I suppose maybe that there's a reason. Well, that does seem more than coincidental. There's yeah. a Remington, Kansas, so isn't there? I don't know. Oh, you're Remington thinking... Remington High School's out in the country. By Whitewater? Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking, eh, it's maybe It's probably so. what it yeah. stood for. Uh, but his... a sheep rancher. Yeah, sheep rancher. And he had extra time, and so he'd do sketches, and friend said, you know, this sheep ranching, you're not going to make any money. Sell out. <laughs> Come back. You're a good... You can draw something. Yeah. He brought all his sketches back to New York and started his career as a as an artist. Wow. Yeah, isn't that odd? That is a bit surprising. I did not know that. Um, I got... Especially because I don't remember one single portrait or painting or bronze that had sheep in it. Well, I think you got a great point. It's, I mean, no, it's usually odd? horses and, well. It's horses and cattle or wildlife. Well, maybe he got started drawing <laughs> sheep. I mean, but, talk, I mean well, let's talk face about it, getting sheep is just kind out. of a blob. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's hard to make it's a sheep look It's hard to show majestic. the definition of muscle. I mean, I've got a number of Remingtons, and mm -hmm. and actually, I like his early stuff better than his late stuff. He got good later on, mm -hmm. and I didn't really care for his didn't good like it stuff. Huh. So it was all smooth. I liked his early stuff that was kind of defined and jagged and mm -hmm. had a lot more Rough around the it. edges. But I don't know. who He really figured out the deal, though, because... There has to be at least, oh, a hundred million Remington sculptors out there. <laughs> and uh, 
they they aren't going to go up a great deal in value unless someday most of the bronze in the world just disappears. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, unless bronze becomes a hot commodity, you're not likely to see a huge return on investments. Yeah, no, I don't think so. But I like them, and that's all that counts, right? And I when it comes to art, so. art is like a good wine. If you like it, it must be good. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com.